This is Network 18. And you are watching CNBC TV 18. Hello and welcome to CNBC TV 18 and Lufthansa special series. All for this one moment, I'm Shireen Bhan. Over the next 30 minutes, you get to meet one of corporate India's top business leaders. You get to understand them. You get to see what drives them, inspires them, motivates them, and perhaps also see a side of them that you've never publicly seen before. Before we bring out our guest for this evening, here's a quick glimpse into his life. Maramangalam Birla, the chairman of the Aditya Birla Group, talks, the world sits up and listens. Whether he's acquiring companies, planning new ventures or even exiting businesses that don't quite fit in. Birla has been pretty much spot on with his decision making over the years. Today, under his leadership, the group has more than doubled its market capitalization with revenues in excess of $28 billion. With a presence that extends to 20 countries, the Aditya Birla Group has a workforce of 100,000 employees belonging to 25 different nationalities. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the chairman of the Aditya Birla Group, Mr. Kumar Mangalam Birla. Okay, I want to start with something that I know that your father told you before he passed away and when he formally handed over the baton of the company to you. He said, be brave and don't look back. But I want to, in a sense, get you to look back at the journey that you've traveled so far, the last decade or so that you have been spearheading operations at your group. What, to your mind, is the biggest contribution that you've made? Well, to start with, the organization uh, needed to be contemporized. Mm. We had to bring in a new talent, uh, talent that uh, was more relevant to the times. Mm. And I think um, over the last 10 years, we've uh, built a first-class, world-class uh, team. Mm. And uh, my ambition really is to build uh, an organization that lasts at least for the next three, four decades. Okay, before I get you to talk about organizational building, here's somebody who's seen Kumara Mangalam Birla, not the business leader, but Kumara Mangalam Birla, the person talking about him. <laughs> Initially, when I was teaching him organizational behavior and I would give him assignments to do, and he would not have done them the next day. Uh, so a couple of times, I kind of told him gently, and he still wouldn't do it. So one day I told him that if he didn't do it next time, I would pack my bags and go home, and he still didn't do it. So I packed my bags and went home. And after about 15 days, he called me and said he had done his work, and after that I never had to worry about it. We were speaking with her and she said that you met her many, many years later at an industry forum and told her that after your father it was she who instilled a sen sense of discipline really in you. I can't say it converted me overnight because it didn't, but I think the more important thing it taught me was um, that it's important to uh, value other people's time. A lot of your initial years were sort of charted out for you by your father. He was a very, very strong influence, whether it was your deciding to do your chartered accountancy or your moving to London to you do your MBA or even your getting married when you did get married. He had a lot to sort of do with those decisions. Did it take you a long time post that to figure out your own decision-making process and how does it actually work for you now? No, that's not true actually because... Uh, uh, I was very independent minded to start with. Uh, mm. It's just that my father and I probably were cut from the same cloth, so we took uh, decisions together. Were there ever any disagreements on any crucial, critical issues no, while were, you were growing up? There were disagreements uh, at work sometimes. Um, and uh, he, he was much more hands on in some, yeah. some ways. Um, I, um, because uh, the organization has also grown, mm. and um, also because uh, that's my way of doing things. Um, I uh, come in where I believe I can add value. Where do you think you add the most value? Uh, when uh, we're in a crisis, but also where uh, there are critical uh, strategic issues involved, where mm. um, what the strategic architecture of a business should be, mm. uh, should we make uh, an acquisition, should we, should we divest a business, mm. 
uh, also very large and critical operations. What do you rely on to make those crucial decisions? Because I want to pick up on something that our Gopalakrishna of Tata Sun says. He says he's assembled an impressive bunch of professionals and he listens to them while he scans the environment to anticipate change. What do you rely on to A, anticipate change, make those strategic decisions and drive yourself out of a crisis, for instance? One interfaces with the outside world. Uh, one has uh, inputs coming uh, from all over the place. But uh, in terms of uh, who I'd uh, turn to for advice, it would be um, completely and wholly and solely uh, my own team. We have a sense of where we want to go. Uh, it's the Which nuances within that. Which is clearly outlined that. by you. Well, no, it can't be outlined by me because um, I can't be expected to be an expert in all the businesses that no. we're in. No. Um, it's, um, I remember the that, last uh, time we spoke, you said that you were not particularly comfortable with the telecom sector and that was a space that you were learning and understanding about. Have you managed to understand the telecom well, space? Well, I've uh, understood it to a large extent, uh, to the extent that I require to. But, uh, you know, it's uh, a bit of a roller coaster ride, uh, that business. Uh, but uh, uh, these, the reason why we um, decide to stay on is because it's got uh, huge growth potential. Here's somebody else who's seen you doing a lot of deals and talking about uh, how you actually go through with them. There are quite a few uh, businesses we have done, in particularly the recent past, the Spice Group, particularly when it took over the telecom Spice. And uh, there are a lot of negotiations. Uh, you remain under full. Uh, you stuck to your prices and uh, uh, you got whatever you wanted on that point. Uh, so I think there was a proper strategy to grow in that business and that's what you did. Uh, so I think once you are convinced I, and I, I want you to get, once you convince something, you are doing it. <laughs> of interesting points that he made there. I want to pick up on the point that he made about Spice, that you're very, very clear and focused about the deal that you want to get done. And if it is not on your terms, you'll walk away from it. Uh, when I went into it, um, uh, I was uh, very clear that I had uh, nothing invested in the situation. I hadn't invested any money in the situation. It would have been a great uh, deal for us uh, strategically. But if it didn't work my way, I would have uh, walked out of the situation, which happened a couple of times, which is why it took two years. And uh, Dr. Modi isn't the most um, uh, easy person to uh, negotiate no, with. He's he not. knows his money very, very well. He's um, a very tough negotiator. So you've got to have uh, your sense of humor uh, around you. And he's, you know, he wears this straw hat and uh, looks like a guy who's just uh, come out of uh, a beach in Miami. So that kind of uh, lightens uh, the environment. Uh, and he's a fun person to work with. Um, uh, I just wasn't taking uh, the whole thing too seriously. I just. Mm. I uh, thought uh, I'd try and I had a bit of a fatalistic uh, attitude around it. But was it very different for the other deals? For instance, in Lassen and Tubro, Mr. Nayak is not like Mr. Modi at all, is it? Mr. Nayak is someone who breathes and lives and uh, walks and dreams uh, LNT. And I have to say that uh, halfway through uh, the battle, if I can call it that, I grew to uh, admire him uh, tremendously and I learned a lot from him. Mm. What uh, was the biggest but, lesson um, that you learned from him? Persistence. I think that. Um, he uh, had his own point of view, he stuck uh, with it, uh, and uh, he thought uh, that uh, his point of view was something that worked uh, best for his uh, stakeholders. Um, and I obviously thought otherwise, and actually in hindsight I've been proved right. Okay, uh, you're not a particularly controversial figure, you don't like controversy, but perhaps the one controversy that you have of late been embroiled in, in a sense, is the one in telecom with the Tatas, and that was a sort of public spat. Uh, what has that taught you about joint ventures, alliances and deals? You know, I think, um, I'm pretty convinced now that uh, I don't want to do uh, joint ventures. Uh, not ever. They don't work. Uh, it's very difficult to be very clear about uh, what each one uh, brings to the table and uh, with time I think um, interests uh, sort of diverge. Mm. Um, and unless I absolutely have to, uh, I wouldn't do a joint venture again. Uh, it's not that uh, we don't have other joint ventures happening. You do? We do. But uh, I wouldn't get into a venture uh, with a partner. I'd rather do it, um, All go by it yourself. ourselves. 
or not do it at all. Okay, so there's two things. The last time I spoke to you, you said you decided that you're not ever going to be in a regulated sector anymore. And now you're saying you don't want to be in a joint venture anymore. So those are two definitive things that you've decided upon. What else? What else is a no as far as Kumara Mangalam Birla is concerned uh, when it comes to business or doing business? Well, I don't want to be a marginalized player. So I want to be number one or two or three. If you look at uh, our businesses, uh, we are uh, amongst the first three players in each of our businesses. Um, barring a few. And I think that if you can't be, you need to get out of the business. At this point in time, we're not number one or two or three, let's say, in uh, some of the businesses you talked about. But I see a line of visibility. I know what uh, uh, our moves are going to be going forward. I have a fair sense of what the competition uh, is likely to uh, do. Mm. And we've got a fighting chance to be amongst the top uh, three, if not uh, number two or number one. Yeah. Himanta Kotari was also talking about how, you know, during the process of deal making, there are also some mistakes that every individual or every company or every group makes. Could you remember any missed opportunities or any big mistakes that perhaps could have changed the course of where you're sitting today? You know, um, this was um, uh, during the divestment process that the government ran. And I think we should have uh, put in a higher bid for Hindustan Zinc. I regret, uh, regret not doing that. Well, you're very proud of the fact, and this comes up uh, whenever we talk about your group, is that you were, in a sense, the first Indian multinational company. And since then, your global aspirations have only grown. We've seen headline-grabbing deals and acquisitions. But when you actually go out there and spot an opportunity and finally zero in and close in on the deal, what are you looking for, and what is the hardest part of actually sealing that deal? You know, it's not uh, going global for uh, the sake of becoming global. It's uh, global uh, because you need to be global. Novellus, in the case of aluminum, uh, takes us uh, to the higher end uh, products uh, in the al aluminum value chain, which is the role I product. remember when you were doing that deal and, you know, when the deal got done, there was a lot of skepticism about the kind of valuations and whether this would actually be a deal that would give you the kind of returns in the long term or not. But you went out there and said, don't look at it from a quarterly basis. I know it will work for us in the long term. After you studied the company, it was very clear that um, this was uh, an acquisition that made a lot of sense. I said very clearly again up front that uh, we wouldn't see value accretion happening for the first three years. But, you know, um, I think uh, management sometimes needs to take decisions that are longer term uh, in their horizon as compared to investors. Has that investors, time frame changed given the fact that we're seeing the kind of volatility in the market? Yes, I think that uh, we're going to be missing that target by a year because of the fact uh, that, you know, the world around us has changed. Well, on that note, we'll take a quick commercial break. But when we return, someone who's known Kumar Mangalam Birla for pretty much all his life.